The UK housing market is in absolute disarray at the moment, with many commentators saying that it looks like the beginning of another 08. This comes amid the falling valuations of the UK pound, higher interest rates and an outlook of an imminent recession. UK banks and building societies, including HSBC and Santander, have started pulling their mortgage products, specifically cheaper five-year fixed products, from the market. This reaction comes amid the repricing of risk of UK government guilds, specifically the 5, 10 and 30 year which their yields have gone up over the recent few days. This shocking news comes after the UK almost reached parity with the US dollar following the mini budget from the UK Chancellor which announced supply side based economic policies which the market did not like. All of this well carnage means that the price of borrowing has gone through the roof and it has large implications for everyone involved. So let's take a look. Hey everyone, Brad here, welcome back to another video. Oh my God, I literally took one week off. I went to Greece just for like a little trip with my girlfriend and celebrate my birthday and literally everything happens while I'm gone, which is very typical. Um, yeah, the mini budget, the chaos with the bonds, the falling pounds, literally everything seemed to be going wrong. And I, I just think it's insane that it happened, but I want to sort of break it down. Things have just occurred over the last few hours, including the Bank of England stepping in to try and stabilise the markets, especially the pound, and why that's really important and why they decided to just buy bonds instead of increasing rates, which to most people is absolutely insane given the fact that we're in um, an inflationary environment Environment and seeing as buying bonds, i.e. bringing, back, bringing down yields, is stimulative, meaning that it increases demand, increases, you know, the the borrowing amount, it reduces the borrowing amount, sorry, that why would you do such a thing in this environment? So it's strange to most people, but I guess they the Bank of England had no choice. I mean, look, the the UK government with Liz Trust in control and um the new UK Chancellor, which sorry, I, I completely forgot his name, um getting into power, they obviously wanted to do something that was really unlike modern day conservatives, which was using supply side economics to build growth. But the problem is, is that we're in, it's, I like to describe it as the right policy at the wrong time. Like this policy over the last 15 years, since 08, 14 years, would have been really beneficial to the country, you know, investing in the right areas, airports and roads, reducing income tax, reducing corporation tax, um, just get, making the government smaller and therefore allowing businesses to prosper, you know, taking away regulation would have been fantastic. The problem is you can't do all that stuff, which is stimulative, in, i.e. increasing demand, increasing investments, increasing spending when you have 9.9% inflation. And it, and it's not just 9.9% uh, with a lower core inflation. Core inflation is up almost 7%. So take away fuel and food, which is very volatile in the short term. Core inflation is high as well, which means that there's too much demand in the economy. So to have a, a budget which is basically saying we want to give people more money right now to go and spend, well, then it, it, it seems to lack complete common sense. And no wonder there's been such an uproar. No wonder why investors across the world were dumping bonds in order to sort of get out and, and therefore selling, selling pounds and buying dollars, for instance, and therefore getting us almost at parity. Think about it from their perspective. It doesn't make sense. You're basically saying to investors, well, you know what, we've got inflation, but we're not going to really do anything about it. And it also hints that between the Bank of England and the UK's government, between fiscal policy and monetary policy are not aligned to combat the same problem. So, of course, the markets didn't like that. And as a result, the government bonds steeply increased um, as people begin to sell them off. And the pound fell. It makes sense. That's just the way that works. Well, it's not such a good news for the UK because the UK is primarily an import based country. We import a vast amount of things. Primarily, let's just talk about the big one at the moment. UK, uh, we, we primarily import uh, gas and electric. Don't know why we've got coal. We can produce some of this stuff ourselves. We've got quite a bit of gas that we can get, but we like to import um, energy. With the pound, and we, we import in dollars, by, by the way, remember, um, oil is priced in dollars. So it's appro approximately about $75 a barrel at the moment, which is way lower than it was only two or three months ago, but still $75 a barrel. Only a couple of months ago, one pound would have got you $1.14. Now it gets you $1.08. It's insane. 
It is absolutely insane. 1.08, sorry, just in case, like, you, you want that made obvious. It's insane. So knowing that just the fact that the currency has been debased, it's been depreciated, sorry, and therefore uh, imports are going to become more expensive, inflation is going to skyrocket even more. Even though it's not core inflation necessarily, it's going to be just headline inflation, it will go up just because we've got to spend more pounds to buy the same amount of dollar goods. Dollar goods, sorry. So the Bank of England has stepped in. Um, if I share my screen very quickly, we can see here the Bank of England steps in to calm the market. It says, the Bank of England has said it will step in to calm the markets after the government tax cutting plan sparked a fall in the pound and caused borrowing costs to surge. The, banking, the bank will start buying government bonds at an urgent pace to help restore all the market conditions. The pound tumbled to $1.58 uh, uh, after the news, down 1.4% against the dollar. So the Bank of England actually goes on to say they're going to buy approximately about $5 billion worth of bonds um, every day, I think it was, and it's, it's an insane thing. Paul Dells, the chief UK economist at Capital Economics, said the bank had been forced to step in to avoid the early stages of a, of a financial crisis and warned, and warned fears over the economic outlook economic outlook. We're, we're growing. This shows that the bank is going to do all it can to prevent a financial crisis and it is already working. Whilst this is welcome, the fact that it needed to be done in the first place shows that UK markets are in a perilous position, which let's be honest here, we actually are. Um, we're at the mercy of quite quite a few things, um, not to get too deep into like the politics of it all. There's been really bad policy across the EU, uh, across Europe, sorry, for a number of years, and we're paying the consequence of it at the moment. Anyway, so this intervention has meant that we can see government gilts or bond, UK bonds 2, 5, 10 and 30 have begun plummeting because obviously demand has now artificially gone up essentially because the Bank of England is now buying them right now and the one day change is 102 points. So the yield is going to begin to go down as the price increases. Price increases with demand and because you get a fixed sum um, for a bond, and if the price goes up, the yield goes down. It makes sense. So that is the situation we're in at the moment. It's a strange one. It's ridiculous. Um, what does this mean for the UK housing market? It's not good. Let's be honest with you. Um, the, the Bank of England is going to need to step in with potentially um, a an, another uh, interest rate increase. And it could be higher than they originally had anticipated before the news of the government announcement. So instead of getting a 50 basis point increase, we might get a 75 basis point increase or a 1% increase, 100 basis points. So this is this is big stuff. In the UK housing market, just the uncertainty that the economic landscape causes means that many people, if you're going to buy a house, a second house, whatever you're going to buy, whatever investment you're going to make, you're unlikely to do so until this settles down. So take that into consideration. We'll probably see um, demand fall off a cliff a little bit especially in the housing market because it's very sensitive to interest rate increases and you know just general economic uncertainty. So that's that. I wanted to go through it. I'm going to keep going through this. I'm going to make a whole nother video on inflation. So please make sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.